Today's episode of the Poncho Section is brought to you by Greasy Apron. Greasy Apron is an incredible service that helps you turn those boring and bland leftovers into something fun and fantastic. Greasy Apron has over 500 unique recipes showing you how to reheat your leftovers. Day old Chinese food? Heat it up. Cold pizza? Heat it up. Leftover chimichangas? Heat it up. And if you sign up now using promo code PONCHO, Greasy Apron will send you other people's leftovers to reheat for free for one whole month. Greasy Apron, because sometimes things taste better the second time around. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Poncho Section. On today's episode, we are going to be discussing the current state of the NFL, and we have on a very special guest, our good friend Jacob Wilkins. If you're a sports fan, you've definitely heard Jacob on the radio. He works for a few different networks, uh, most notably WFAN Radio, as well as CBS Sports. So please, enjoy. So Ethan. Yes. How's your fantasy league going? Yeah, so that's a, that's a funny conversation. Yeah. yeah. So my fantasy league... Did not turn out so well. Yeah. My fantasy team, rather. Your fantasy team? And I was the commissioner of our league. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I think it actually worked out better because then it actually seems like I didn't rig it. And yeah. I wanted, I was actually shooting for like a third place. Third sure. Or even second place, I'd sell for it to get a little extra money. But, you know, I wanted, I didn't want it to seem like I'd rigged it. But, right. Uh, right. Yeah. Think, things seem to be going pretty well for me. Yeah. yeah. So, Mike. He heading to the ship. Heading yeah. to the ship. Yeah. Mike's doing very well in our league. Yeah. And. I'm still alive, I think, in my other, in my work league. Okay. And, well, now after watching this game, I don't think so anymore. I need Cam Newton to have a pretty sour game, and yeah. that doesn't seem to be working out. But Have him get a few safeties? Yeah, <laughs> it's not going to happen. But I still want to talk about the NFL today. And, Perfect. And it's, you know, we're very lucky that we have a good friend, <laughs> Jacob Wilkins, here with us today. Hey guys, great to be here. Yeah, fantasy leagues are always tricky, but yeah. and especially running the knockout pools. I have a friend that uh, runs a knockout pool, mm -hmm. and he's won it. And I mean, by nature, uh, politically, you could try to tie him to a collusion sort of or a rigged thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you do want to be a commissioner of integrity. Ours may be um, ousted. Uh, people seem to be, I think it's been pestering for a few oh, years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, and and he's a great, nice guy, but uh, there do seem uh, to be uh, some callings for uh, maybe a change in leadership. Oh, what's, uh -oh. what's he done? <laughs> well, um, I mean, I don't want you to. I don't, if he's listening, I don't want you to out him. I don't think he's listening. <laughs> no, no, I I think I tell Latham all this directly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that I think that there is a little bit of a disorganization in the draft. I had yeah. to do my draft from upstate New York because it was on Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. I did not take any weekend off during the summer, but this was like. Going to take off Labor Day weekend. Did not want to deal with the technology. Yeah. And then even then, and this may be what really leads to the, the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. I drafted from this like uh, sort of camp lot, mm -hmm. and I picked David Johnson not once, not twice, but three times. Wow. And we had to restart the draft for technical difficulties. He was late to his own draft. Oh, nice. And so I said, you know what? Maybe this is bad. This is just screaming that I shouldn't take David Johnson. Yeah. So I took Jordy Nelson. And Jordy's been good. Mm -hmm. A really he's solid. Had, he's had some rough But weeks. David Johnson's been outstanding. Yeah, he's been great. I mean, that could have won me the league. Yeah. That was actually my first, I think he was my first round pick in my other league. Okay. I'm talking about my work league, which, again, I'm probably out of that one too. <laughs> but see, here's the problem. I, I think, I don't think I have a gambling problem, but I think when it comes to football, I just seem to just go for anything, any pool, like, at work, if someone says, "Hey, five bucks in the games this mm -hmm. weekend," I'm like, "I'm in." You know, I just when, when I, like, I'm to, overconfident, and it never works out. When you have <laughs> to justify or preface that you don't have a gambling problem, you have a gambling. Yeah, problem. <laughs> I never like being in more than two leagues at a time because even I when you have, even do two, I have a hard enough true. time with one, yeah. and I'm like, I struggle to make decisions right. on trades. Yeah, well, one year I was actually in four. Jeez, and that was that was way too much to handle. I did win one of them though, okay. and I was not asked back to that league. <laughs> because that, that league was <laughs> it was with someone that I had worked with who was a few years younger and it was him and a bunch of his friends from college. Yeah. 
So it was me and all his college friends, and yeah. I won the league. Mm -hmm. So they probably all got together and said, who is this older guy who took all our money? We don't want him back. So I didn't think you could do that legally. I, mean, that's like, that's I don't a... think you could get kicked out of a league. Usually people leave these leagues, yeah. and it's they're almost like uh, a legacy jobs. These yeah. expeditions, it's hard to get into yeah. leagues. <laughs> yeah, I think it was more I was just never asked back. So <laughs> Well, your behavior, I'm sure, warranted that. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, I find it's... it's the, the thing that I hate when you have multiple leagues mm -hmm. is where you end up rooting against yourself at, at a certain time. I mean, you do get to a point where you do see one league you're doing better than the other league, so mm -hmm. that becomes your kind of primary league, right. and then you have your beta league or whatever. I just don't know how you keep track of the players. It's like, a lot, bro, because <laughs> eventually you're concerned about everyone. If you have a league, right. Yeah. Right. And it's not, league right, stuff. and then right, you have one. You're rooting for one player who is going to be a detriment that you're playing against yeah. the other league. And I just going. I'm thinking back to experiences during the course of my years, and I was late to the fantasy football game. Like mm -hmm. I was once invited in college, and that was when like a thirty five dollar buy in was a lot. And yeah, I pay a hundred, thrilling. Yeah, uh, <laughs> money down the drain every year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I, I just I didn't care. I didn't. I was like in last place. But yeah. in the few years I've been doing it, I mean. Not that my job's so much busier, but I broadcast uh, games, and yeah. so I've had situations like where I'm doing like a Sunday basketball game, right? mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, you're preparing for like the games that, that is the job, mm -hmm. and I'm like, crap, this guy's starting, and I have to like pull out the iPad at like <laughs> noon and be like, I'm doing like, why isn't the Wi-Fi at this college working? Yeah. I need the Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> you, get, you get crazy. <laughs> so we, we actually had mentioned that you are a broadcaster right. for um, for WFAN radio mm -hmm. and for CBS radio. I didn't mention, um, well, I didn't mention the Hudson Valley Renegades, which I'm sure is something that you... <laughs> the start of my career. That was, that was where you got the your start. start. Of my career yeah. to our Rockland County and Duchess County. Uh, yeah. Listeners, great, great times. Uh, yeah. My first two summers, yeah. First, uh, it, I mean, it was an unpaid internship out of college. Mm -hmm. And then the next year I came back, uh, did a paid internship. But it, more importantly, I was uh, the you know the lead broadcaster the second year and traveling with the guys it was it was awesome i mean that's a great experience yeah. and i've been to those games and they're a lot of fun yeah yeah uh, and fun. then but you've done other stuff too you know with stony brook uh yep. basketball yep um what are some of the other ones uh well i've done uh not to bore your audience uh well we want to we want to get, get, get well, all the stuff out there before before we move on yeah well i've done i also do work for sirius xm right and okay, right now sorry, i'm doing time. Uh, games for Manhattan College, mm -hmm. um, and then had done MSG Varsity. They did high school or do high school games mm -hmm. in the tri-state area. Uh, right. Did for, did all the sports really for them yeah. uh, during the course of my time and voiced highlights for MLB.com. It's really yeah. what the narrative is, yeah. guys, is that I can't hold on to a job. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that's not and true that's, at all. Uh, no, that, I mean that, that has been. Uh, <laughs> that's actually on my LinkedIn profile. I can't hold on to a job. <laughs> well, you also have your own podcast. That's right. Let's talk. Let's talk. Yeah, yeah. Let's promote that. Yeah. Yes, we're gonna. We'll be back. I think you know, we're right coming off the holidays, mm -hmm. uh, because it's interview based, and yeah. Uh, so we're on hiatus, as we say. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think it, the focus this year has been on sports and mental health. It's been so and, interesting. Yeah, yeah. and and yeah. we've been liberal. We were talking, Mike, before we were on the air. But you know, I mean, it's a little bit liberal in the mental health. Side, I, I think a better description might be mental aspects of sports. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we had a coach from a school in Long Island, the Delphi, Dave Duke, uh, to talk about, you know, life as a coach or yeah. as a basketball mm -hmm. coach. And you could do different coaches. I mean, each sport sort of has its different wrinkles, but For sure. the, the, the link in all of them is these are not normal nine to five jobs. Definitely. These are all encompassing jobs. You better have communication with. Whether you're married, girlfriend, family, I mean, you, you hear about these coaches that sleep in their office. So I'd love to have a football coach on. We had uh, Anthony Saratelli, who was a former professional baseball player. That was player. a great interview. I really yeah, enjoyed thanks. that one. Um, yeah, he's a cool guy. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, he's the guy that came up with the likes of Eric Hosmer with the Royals. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, his personal struggle um, in being sort of this journeyman minor leaguer but yeah it's also a blast uh, so it's a you know um it, it's not almost not a real job to, to be in minor league baseball but there's yeah. there's certainly pressures that come with it you're oh, trying sure. to get to the show 
Um, so yeah, we've done we've and then be, the season before was sort of focused just on people in the sports world, mm-hmm. and we right. had uh, Tiki Barber on, and yes, uh, that was so uh, former former Giants, yeah, Tiki, Tiki Barber, yeah, Tiki does. <laughs> I'll give Tiki the plug. He doesn't need it, but does Tiki yeah. and Tierney on CBS Sports Radio and that's uh, his I, company. I really enjoyed your interview with Tiki because, you know, I had some issues with him, of course, as a Giants <laughs> fan. Yeah. But, uh, many, uh, you know what? He's honest. He's sure. very honest, and, mm-hmm. I, and I really appreciate that. He's honest. Um, but we, we want to talk uh, more um, about football, about the state of football mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. And we were talking uh, about <clears throat> fantasy. And it's interesting, I read something that. One of like a lot of people have come up with different reasons, and I want to get you know your guys' mm-hmm. opinion on this uh, about why this year the ratings have dropped mm-hmm. um, significantly, and you know you can equate it to a lot of things. But one thing uh, people are saying is that fantasy football has played a big <clears throat> factor in that, and that people aren't as invested in in their in each game where they're just checking online to see how well their players scored. I I actually I actually read a few articles. Yeah. I'm not uh, sure where topic. I'm not sure where it was. I'm sure it's been in a few different places. But what do you guys think about that? Uh, I have not read that. Yeah, because um, <clears throat> I don't I don't know. It's, for me, I think that well, that's you, been that's been going on a long time. I don't know yeah. how that would be. Well, I'll give you I'll give you a couple of thoughts. Yeah, <clears throat> um, ratings are certainly down, mm-hmm. and I, I have no for my work. I don't. Um, there's no. Bias either way. I have no no uh, what's that term? Uh, stick in the game or yeah yeah whatever. yeah. Whatever. Let's get into the game. Yeah. <laughs> Great start to the podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> struggling to speak. Uh, but a, a few things. The main reason I think that was coming from ratings being down early was it was the election season. And this yeah. was a unique election. Yeah. On whatever side you were on. And people were glued uh, to the television. Now, where were ratings down? Mm-hmm. I never heard as much about ratings being down. I tried to look for numbers on this in the Sunday window, meaning one o'clock and four o'clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, they may have been down over what the equivalent game was the year before, but okay. where the focus was was on Thursday night, yeah, Sunday night, and Monday night. So why were there issues? Well, let's start with each night individually. Yeah. Thursday night. Well, the election is the overriding thing. Obviously, when you have a debate going on the same night as a Falcon Saints game, back when, even I mean Atlanta, they were it was week four or something. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna get you're gonna get whacked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, this was one of the most that first debate, which I believe was the Monday debate, was one of the most highly anticipated debates. It was uh, in history. Uh, so, but looking at each night, Thursday night. Uh, so let's take the election as the overriding theme. Mm-hmm. Thursday night's been an issue because the games have been not just bad, but of poor quality. Uh, there, yes. there really weren't yeah. any close games to point to, uh, and they were ugly, and they weren't sizzling matchups either. Yeah. Um, so, and that has led to a report that the NFL is looking to get rid of Thursday night football. They right. denied that. Um, <laughs> of course they did. As they did. Yeah. Uh, now, the contract runs through 2017, okay. so I don't think you would ever see a change next year. Right. But the NFL, then that's a package, uh, to, to try to explain it in parlance that everyone understands, yeah. Yeah, that Thursday Night Football is what is called a television package Yeah. Uh, that is right now, CBS had it along with NFL. It's always in conjunction with yeah. NFL Network. Because, see, mm-hmm. I'm totally lost with that now, which right. it used to be just the one... <laughs> CBS and now it's NBC. Now they're streaming it on Twitter. I don't know. Don't get yes. It's, the Twitter thing is <laughs> a separate element. Right. That's a digital. So that's another. Right, right. I mean, the NFL is looking for many revenue streams, mm-hmm. uh, and they don't uh, leave too many stones unturned. So Twitter was the digital arm. But to simplify it for the audience in terms of television ratings, mm-hmm. uh, it is a package that is really split between CBS for the first half of the year and NBC for the second half. And then what happens is, is that the networks are responsible for producing the games. Even some games, they're always on NFL Network. Sometimes it's CBS and NFL Network, Mm -hmm. or it's NBC and NFL Network, or it's just NFL Network. But if it's NBC's portion of the schedule, they produce those NFL Network games. Right. Just like CBS would. Uh, And so, and that package also includes what now with college football over, 
are some Saturday night games, which are not new. We've always had Saturday games. They do in, in December. When college yeah. football ends, mm-hmm. correct. They were usually partitioned off to the networks. Now it's under that envelope. So, but focusing on Thursday night, um, to sum it up, I mean, bad games, players are unhappy. What the NFL is yeah. going to have to decide, because once that package ends, the contract ends after next year, it's yeah. the, the NFL could say, we don't want to do Thursday night mm-hmm. anymore. Uh, or here's how we're going to do it. Yeah. And it's interesting. On paper, it should work. Sure. Now, it all, we had the uh, Oakland-Kansas City game, I think, the uh, last week. Yeah, a few weeks which ago. was, like, I mean, on paper, great. Excellent game. Didn't <laughs> yeah. see what the rating was, but I don't think it was bad. I think yeah. It was a good rating. Right. Uh, you're going to get people watching late in the year. I mean, if you put a good game on. Mm-hmm. But what the rule is, what the NFL wants to do, is get every team in prime time once. Yeah. So you're going to get a Cleveland on Thursday night. No matter what. Yeah. Right. And you're going to get um, each usually divisional matchups. And that's sort of a luck of the draw. How yeah. many people, when they put Oakland, Kansas City on at the beginning of the year, most people didn't think the Raiders were going to their first playoff uh, berth since 2002. Yeah. yeah. They were. Wow. Ends up being a great matchup. <clears throat> so that's the Thursday night question mark. Mm-hmm. Then you look at Sunday night. That was, again, you're always, it's always going to come down to the games, uh, even with the election cycle, because, I mean, I can only speak to my own viewing habits um, while well, I'm certainly in tune to everything going on, mm-hmm. if, if there's a game I want to see on Sunday night, it wouldn't stop. It's not like, I mean, I just don't sit and watch cable news for a whole primetime block. Yeah. Um, I usually will go for, you know, like at lunch, put on CNN or MSNBC mm-hmm. or whatever. So the Sunday night thing was a bit weird. Uh, what has been a thing on Sunday night ratings wise is you do have, though I don't think they're really competing for the same audience, is a show like The Walking Dead. I was going to say, like, all the, like, the Sunday night program, like, even HBO, you know, Westworld is a mm. big thing, too. Yep. Sunday night's the most competitive night in television. Yeah. Now, it also can lead you to the most eyeballs. Yeah. Um, but I, I wouldn't be too concerned. Sunday night is not changing. <clears throat> I think Sunday night is the one that I would think is, is thriving right now. Yeah. The one that would be doing the best. What, what I think, Well, too, they should do the best. Yeah. Not sorry to interrupt you. No, they no. should do the best because they have... The best games, that's the premier schedule. Right. Yeah. It used to be Monday night, now it's Sunday. Night. Right. Uh, and then what they also have the ability, obviously, to do is to flex games. They're the only package that can flex games. When you yes. had the Colts and Jets on Monday night, a brutal uh, showing, uh, <laughs> from a Jets perspective, uh, yeah. uh, you, that game was sucked. They were stuck there. You couldn't move it. On the other hand, when NBC didn't want the Patriots and Jets, they... Push them right out of prime time and mm-hmm. put Kansas City, Denver in. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> so you can do that. They also have the flex. On- so they, they've got a really good package. Now, Monday night, you don't have the flex option. Mm-hmm. What you had, I think, is the issue beyond the election on Monday nights. Bad games uh, culminating in the Jets-Cardinals game where Sean McDonough, the announcer, mm-hmm. was saying, I mean, there was such a ridiculous amount of penalties. Mm-hmm. No one's going to sit through a game that's not close and has too many penalties. Uh, yeah. So that was um, an issue there as well. What the NFL also had a few times this year was that Sunday morning London game. Yes. Um, yes. Those are annoying. Which had a good response last year. That really they good. also use those games, I think, as experiments for like the Yahoo and the Twitter mm-hmm. live stream. Sure. But this year, what I think the NFL came to the conclusion, I think they're eliminating it for next year, Mm-hmm. from what I've read, is that it's oversaturation. I mean, yeah, I find yeah. it. I think it's hard to, if you're sitting at the bar for, to, you know, the 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock, it's hard to focus on a Sunday night. I mean, I get screen headaches, you <laughs> yeah. know? I mean, the games can be great. Well, you could you could theoretically start from nine, when the London game starts, 9.30, yep. go to a bar and just go until yeah, yeah. you go through the entire day. Right? Absolutely. So you know, watch the night game and yeah. never take it, you know? Get up, maybe take, go out and stretch for a half hour and then come back. <laughs> it's a great way to uh, not interact with your wife. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's like promoting that. Uh, no, but like, but it's just, it's everywhere. It's, and it's all the time. Yeah. And, and I think too, there's just, there's so many night games now. Right. That there's really not enough good games out there. There's not enough good matchups. Right. So the question becomes, yeah. right, the fun of the NFL, I think, is when, when you get 
it's the one o'clock, you know, games. Mm -hmm. And you get to that three to four window. And Mike Francesa calls it the witching hour, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> you have all these games ending at once in these, and you're going to get a couple of great endings. Mm -hmm. um, but if you That's put those true. games as a standalone, yeah. a lot of them wouldn't, would be not appealing to watch. Oh, yeah. So Sunday morning, I think, is going to go by the wayside because I think the NFL realizes that there's um, – just too many windows. Think of it. Yeah. This year, you have games on at different points of the year. Through the whole year, you have Monday night, Thursday night, uh, Sunday night, Monday night. And then on certain nights, you're always going to have Saturday night mm -hmm. and Sunday morning yeah. at different points. Um, it's, it's, it's a matter of how far you can push the revenue stream mm -hmm. without oversaturating the audience. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they've realized, at least on the Sunday morning... That that was too much. Mm -hmm. um, on the fantasy angle, I don't think I think fantasy football has helped the game enormously. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> what I do think is there's a couple of things though that are interesting to see how it would affect viewership. One is the continually is the growth of the red zone. This is one of those oh, things yeah. mm -hmm. where one thing has helped. Mm -hmm. The NFL creates a channel that is on two different cables, uh, Direct TV and uh, Time Warner. Um, that you're literally paying for to get that seven hours. I mean, I pay for the sports package, but I'm mm -hmm. paying for the sports package to get the red zone. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, but is that taking away from individual viewership for games? Mm -hmm. um, the second thing, uh, you know, so I think that's the main thing that I'd be more concerned about yeah. on the fantasy end. Well, but at the same time, well, if you think of fantasy as a form of gambling, or maybe you don't, but gambling helps viewership mm -hmm. enormously. I mean, the of NFL is, is, is done enormously well off that. So those are some of the, the factors. Um, also, pace of – the NFL, clearly, it's a topic they're taking seriously. Uh, pace of game-wise, um, they're, I think, week 16. They're experimenting with some different structural commercial breaks. Mm, uh, really? Like maybe less? I about? think less but longer. <laughs> I think uh, less but longer. Uh. Uh, yeah, you're not going to get rid of the commercials, but um, you know, I actually, uh, less but longer actually sounds more appealing to me. I mean, we'll see. Once, we'll see. Once you see right. it. We'll see. But I just I hate that I know. I once they come back and there's a kickoff, I mm -hmm. just like get up immediately because I know there's going to be another one. You know, yeah. yeah. And someone, I mean, not to you know, if someone gets injured. Of course, they're going to go to commercial too. Like it's just a lot of time. Yeah, a lot yeah. of time yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's one factor. of those things. Yeah, where every single you know. I, th I think that that's one of the big reasons why a lot of people are kind of just getting fed up with it. With it, yeah. like e you know, every single time there's going to be a commercial coming up. I think it was maybe two weeks ago. I was watching the Giant game, and I th honestly think that they used up all of the commercials that they had allotted in that, a specific time frame. Because towards like the the last quarter, there was like no commercials at all. Well, yeah, usually they're they're front loaded. Uh, it was. That's why you'll see more timeouts. But it was. Te it was terrible. It was just. Yeah. It, it, <clears throat> unnecessary bombardment of commercials. Yeah. Just show us the game. It take. It's, it gets rid of the excitement. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I went to a hockey game recently, and I'm not um not the biggest hockey fan. I like it. I just don't follow it as closely as football per se. And and I just forgot how different the pacing is so different yeah and just how it's just and you know it, it keeps going and there's no there's no stopping really i mean like little, little well they have, they have a five minute 10 minute 15 mm -hmm. where they're gonna right. have breaks right but it, but it's but broken it's up better yeah. though where you yeah. it's all it's like all in one block and i forgot about that because i'm so used to watching football yeah. where it's a one play and yeah. you know, well and, and people talk about i mean soccer is a growing sport why is soccer so popular uh even if it's on a sunday morning or something mm -hmm. people know it's two hours and they're out <laughs> yeah um so that that the, it will be interesting, uh, but here's the end story so far, and this is courtesy of this guy Mike Mulvihill, I think I'm pronouncing his name right. He's uh, works with Fox Sports, mm -hmm. decides where what games you're getting, mm -hmm. and what area he creates. I think helps with those what they call broadcast maps. Um, and broad, by the way, some of the NFL broadcast rules black out. It gets very complicated, so that's mm -hmm. all a factor here. But <clears throat> he said that uh, ratings based on the second half post-election, are basically balanced. I think they're going to come up just short because of the anomaly this week of games on Christmas Eve and then a couple mm -hmm. on Christmas Day. But they're basically going to even out with what it what it was, uh, you know, I guess what it was last year. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's not a sky is falling thing, but mm -hmm. the NFL is certainly aware of 
of the issues and aren't, I guess, resting on their laurels. Um, and trust me, they've got a lot of things to deal with uh, yeah. outside of just, you know, uh, in terms of concussions and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, the other thing is, I still think when you look at those 425 time slots for Fox and CBS, I mean, those yeah. are where the, the biggest viewership comes in. Yeah. And when you have a game like Seattle Green Bay or you have a Sunday night game like Tampa Dallas, I mean, there's a reason the Cowboys are in prime time as much as they are. They're a ratings home run. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So these are things as well yeah. that uh, obviously help ratings. For, for me, I think the 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 issues that the NFL is having right now, mainly with ratings, it's kind of broken up into two parts. One that one of them being pacing mm-hmm. and the other one being, I'm going to call PR. So the first one pacing with one, too many commercials. Yeah. Uh, and then the various rule changes that they're making that I guess that would affect the excitement of the game. And granted, I don't completely, there's a part of me that's completely for the protection of the players. You want to make sure that they are not hurt. I mean, this is, granted, it is an entertainment form for us, but it is their livelihood. Yeah. Yeah. But certain things like changing where the kickoff is, yeah. it's always going to be a touchback. So, and straight to commercial. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th- you mentioned, Jacob mentioned before, the endless penalties from the, the other game. Yeah. It, it takes away the excitement from the game. So that, I think, is one of the, the factors. The other part, and I'm calling PR, is, is two-sided. One being, I'm calling it the fake humanitarian efforts of the NFL. Mm-hmm. That being, they have their uh, breast cancer month and they have their veterans month, which is, would be great. On the surface, that's great. That's what we, we should be honoring our veterans. We should be uh, making awareness to breast cancer. But for them, to, they, for the NFL seems to need to designate specific months, and when you're not in that month, you're not allowed to do a specific thing. So then they go off and they fine Brandon Marshall for wearing green shoes for mental health, or D'Angelo Williams for wearing pink shoes for breast cancer, or William Gay for wearing purple shoes for domestic abuse, or Cameron Hayward for wearing... The uh, eye black for mm-hmm. as a tribute for his father. All those people were fine because it didn't fit in with it with the NFL's uh, humanitarian <laughs> position. Is it was inconvenient for them. So like part of me wants them to just be like it, stop stop pretending that you actually care about these things because it's all for money. And if you actually look into it um, with the breast cancer awareness, everything that they they say that they donate based on the merchandise that they sell, all the pink merchandise apparently only about 12 percent of that goes to the organization that they donate it to and the organization that they donate to donate it to only uses about 60 percent of that towards whatever they do for breast cancer so about a 30 something dollar hat two dollars of it's gonna go to use wow i mean so that and then just overall they're just bizarre moral code where to do drugs you get suspended five games or whatever but you beat your wife and you're only suspended by well, one game well, like just make up your mind as to what what moral stance you're going to take or don't take a stance at all well do you think yeah i was thinking about that just the more stories that seem to come out in the press mm-hmm. do you think those kind of things turn people off where they they're watching you know they're watching someone like josh brown for example kicker for the giants mm-hmm. that i found out was well, he was a wife beater for one, but also that the NFL was actually um, hiding his wife. I guess it was during the Pro Bowl uh, last year in right. in Hawaii, right. where they so what they did was they his wife was staying on a different floor. With the wife and the kids were on a different floor than Josh Brown, hmm. and they didn't tell they didn't tell him where they were. Right, the NFL kept her in because they knew about their relationship. Wow! So the NFL covered it up. And, wow. And in, and today, you know, these things get around. And I think something like that maybe sends a bad message and parents maybe don't want their kids watching because they don't want them to find out about this kind of thing. Just a theory. I don't know. Um, but Well, listen, here, there, there's two different things here. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, the Ray Rice thing yeah. was a huge – I mean, last year was a, a – Wild, it's not the appropriate. Was that last year or was that two years ago, Ray Rice? Uh, Ray might have been two years ago. Been two years there ago. was a year, though, where I mean, you had Ray Rice, you had Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson, the same year, uh, and, and it seemed it was not a good time for the league. Mm-hmm. The league still seems to, 
the PR has not been good off their handling. And I think also the media really wants to pounce on it oh, you know, sure. from the Ray Rice thing and, and sort of Roger Goodell's comments after or uh, the media is ready to pounce. <clears throat> uh, a guy, Adam Silver has handled these things so adeptly, uh, the NBA commissioner, that I don't think, I think he's given uh, a little more uh, leeway to enact policy mm -hmm. or use his judgment by the media. Uh, but sure, it doesn't. I mean, it's, it's it wouldn't be good for any league <laughs> to, yeah. to have that. Now, here was always a debate, even in the Ray Rice thing or in, in whatever, is you hate it to, to hear about these things, Josh yeah. Brown, but people come right back to the television. It mm -hmm. didn't affect ratings because exactly. people still, they divide. They obviously don't support being your wife. Oh, the Greg Hardy thing as well. Greg Hardy, right. Mm -hmm. They don't support that element. But Sunday at 1.00. They enjoy the camaraderie. Yeah. Me coming over to your house yesterday to I watch mean, a game. It's, it's the same the for me. For right. me, I'm not. It's right. not going to stop me from watching. Now the other. Um, so that's that's I think sort of what has been the thought process on that. Yeah. I think what is a bigger concern uh, is obviously making sure for the NFL that high school participation uh, is up yes. and and that there's still people in the pipeline i mean there's plenty of kids in the pipeline there's I mean, plenty so but that would be i think uh you know something they're always that's why they have all these youth initiatives mm -hmm. now to the idea of the causes uh as you brought up now the breast cancer uh month is actually not going to take place next year that was just recently announced mm, wow. uh, or meaning it's not going to be uniform uh i think players will have the opportunity to engage in their own Charities. That would be good. I don't remember if it was strictly with breast cancer or cancer or okay. if it was charities in general. <clears throat> but I think uh, that sentiment um, may have been, you know, realized in terms of allowing that'd be great more personalization yeah. and the cleats. Um, and listen, they, they, the league always, I mean, there, there was a controversy last night. They called the flag on uh, El Ezekiel Elliott for going into a Salvation Army kettle camp. Yeah. Now, you, you don't want the game to slow down. Again, you're always dealing with different factors. Mm -hmm. The reason that is, really, is because they want to keep the pace of the game going. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's a guy jumping into a Salvation Army camp. He's <laughs> not getting fined because the Salvation Army's donations went up like astronomically just from that name awareness yeah um and it was fun to watch and people watch football to be entertained sure absolutely and actually what should be what people have argued is like why is the lambo leap allowed and but you can't use this prop or mm -hmm. whatever yeah um but to the so you have that facet you also now have cleats I, i'm not just trying i'm just playing not even devil's advocate just bringing up uh, no, yeah. The cleats, those were issues, legitimate things you yeah. brought up with the cleats, but they did, uh, I think that, I forgot if it's a week or a month, cleats for a cause where people are wearing different cleats to mm -hmm. support their different causes. So um, those, I think, are minor things in the big scheme. I mean, <laughs> the Antonio Brown twerking uh, yeah. thing was a debate of whether that should be a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and remember, talk radio, the NFL is yeah. always going to dominate and, and is... People need things to, to talk about, but the NFL is happy to deal with those issues rather than players getting into trouble on the domestic mm -hmm. violence front and whatever. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they did, uh, even though obviously the Brown investigation mm -hmm. seemed to have flaws, but they have brought in people. Uh, I forgot, Lisa Freeze, I think her name is, that, you know, that are qualified people to investigate these things. So, mm -hmm. I mean, things have changed since that initially. Amen. Well, I think now that more people are more in tune to this stuff, yep. that hopefully they'll stop trying to cover it up so much. Yeah. But, I mean, we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. But you don't think that, I mean, you're probably right that because for someone like me, it's a good example. Like, it doesn't affect my viewership. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would think that people, you know. The, and I don't think that, that that's wrong. I mean, you shouldn't. No. Why should. <laughs> um, why a, is it going to make a difference? And why should everybody. A per, you affect my wanting to root on my team mm -hmm. by your actions? Now, I think what fans want is strict discipline. Yes. <laughs> sure. They want that player to be punished. Well, I think that's so. that's the problem people have with Roger Goodell is they his punishments seem very inconsistent. Right. Yeah. So um, that's essentially what I was trying to to, to say. Yeah. That. No, I mean that's I mean that's a big problem. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't make and sense. You're, and you're hitting on all the Mike, the, the, some of these hot topics, the marijuana topic. Mm -hmm. You know what? They, what gets the biggest attention when players speak out? 
I mean, that's yeah. really what, yeah, it's what, true. I mean, you can have the, the highest profile talk radio hosts talk about it. I mean, it's just noise, I think. Mm-hmm. But when the league hears, when players talk about it, it starts a discussion. Yeah. Are you uh, saying that this podcast right here is not going to start a discussion? Oh, it is. It already is. <laughs> <laughs> this is obviously you know, a different. You know, I don't even categorize. Yeah. Yeah. General. That, that's how that's how high up we are. Yeah. yeah. It, it doesn't it's, even need to be said. It's just other. <laughs> I mean, they're just, we're on our ivory tower. Of course. Uh, and with the security at Ethan's apartment, you really do feel yeah. like ivory tower. <laughs> uh, I, so. did, I did want to uh, talk a little more about kids getting into the game, because that is something interesting, where, yeah, there are, I mean, like you said, there are a lot of kids still playing it now, but do you think in the future it's going to be something that more people will gravitate towards, or parents will be like, you know what, this might be a little too dangerous, I'm yep. seeing what happens to all these players, you know, they're, the life, the average lifespan of of an NFL player is something, an ex NFL player. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it's past sixty. I could be wrong in that statistic, but I know it's somewhere around there where it's it's very low. And yeah, I mean, this is a, this would be a question for for parents. I yeah, mean, that every parent is dealing with. <clears throat> Do I have my kid play football? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we have seen the effects of CTE. Mm-hmm. We see the heartbreaking stories of how players' lives have changed. You mean you mentioned the financial element. Players going broke, mm-hmm. obviously, mm-hmm. don't have guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. Um, not that baseball's easy. I mean, it, we talked about it in that podcast I did with uh, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the money's low in minor league baseball. Yeah. This is not a windfall. Um, but yeah, I mean, Real Sports on HBO has done stories on players going broke. I mean, four years after, it's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Um but I think more to the health point. You're not worrying about a kid's finances. Right, and, sure. And you're at deciding whether to put them in peewee football. It is going to be on the NFL to convince people that the technology is getting better and that they are safe. Um, I mean, that, that's more like down stuff. the line kind of stuff where, you know. We're well, it's starting now, though. I mean, mm-hmm. when we say down the line, mm-hmm. yes, by the time those kids maybe get to, you know, the we're talking five, six years away, if, if – that is something I think the NFL is following very, very uh, seriously. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, well, I think about my own nephew who, um, mm-hmm. you know, my brother-in-law played football in high school. He's a big, mm-hmm. he's a big Miami fan. And he's, and he said, you know, originally he was saying, you know, he was going to get, I mean, my nephew's two, but he was going <laughs> to get him, then one day get him into, you know, Pop Warner Football League. Yeah. And, um, and that kind of, you know, he's, he started to like soccer a little bit. Mm-hmm. Interview, so they're kind of leaning the other way. Now well, the is pretty dangerous too. It is, uh, but it's it, it, yeah. I, it can't be anywhere near yeah. no. dangerous. I, I mean, can't imagine the the concussion uh, amounts are a- anywhere close. Well, hockey has been become a major. You know, if you're an enforcer, uh, sure. uh, yeah, there's issues. But, but certainly, I don't know, some hits. I saw Darren Sproles take a hit yeah. last week that just made I, I I couldn't watch it again. It was, there there are a few, and I mean I know that they they've been doing pretty well with uh finding when it's uh helmet to helmet but still sometimes there's just some nasty yeah. nasty hits but it's the fine balance of as you said how many penalties the rules that are protecting the players yeah. why are they protecting the players right because uh you're putting a product out you don't want players mm-hmm. getting uh annihilated um so these are the constant conflicts that a competition committee is dealing with when they meet in the off season. We don't want to water down, for lack of a better term, the product. We don't want to alienate our hardcore mm-hmm. fan base that says there's too many flags and touch mm-hmm. fouls and that mm-hmm. sort of thing. I don't. Uh, the officials have an enormously difficult job, oh, yeah. uh, but you do want. You also want the game to be entertaining, uh, but you are. So you, you don't want to water down the product, but you don't want to put players at severe. Risk. I mean, we just had obviously a, a major concussion settlement that the players don't think the retired players think is not high enough. Mm-hmm. But I mean, this is we're talking still, you know, a billion dollars. We're talking money going out to lots of different players. So this is not an issue that's going away. Yeah, I just read an article. It actually made me laugh a bit. Somebody was saying the whole the whole problem is these refs. They want the attention all of themselves. That's why they're throwing all these penalties. Have you seen Ed Hockey League? I mean, no. come on. It's jacked. Yeah, he's, uh, he's ridiculous. He's my favorite ref. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Triplett's crew is the one that throws, uh, I think, the most flags. Oh, is that true? Yeah. yeah. 
And Jeff, I mean, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but it's not like he's not an Adonis for the camera. I mean, yeah, it's not. Like, I, it's I was not cracking like up. Like, it's like, not like Gene Sterrett you know? Yeah, I was laughing. I was like, there's 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 some legitimate uh, like issues that you could bring up. I don't think this was one of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> you look at the players now; they're just and, and like a difference between 30 years ago. It's like the difference in size is yeah. just astronomical, and that and that has something to do with it too. Yeah, you know, yeah. and there's also people. And I'm sure you don't agree with this. That think that there should be no helmets, and that would, and then there'd be no helmet to helmet hits, right? Because people would be more careful if they're not wearing helmets. But no, I mean that's that's come up it's as a, a discussion. It's, it's an interesting theory, but I think once you've gotten this far, and the way that the hits are now, I feel like you can't go back and say let's remove the helmets yeah. and try this out I'm and also, see what happens I'm until just, someone loses a head. I'm just also imagining like there's a scramble for a ball and a 300 pound guy trips over and falls on some some poor schlub's head. Yeah. I don't I don't think it could go in that no, direction. I don't think you'll see that. And you just have these hits where you're going shoulder high yeah. and how yeah. easy is it? But these have all been scientific studies. I mean, the helmet is yeah. going to be a huge thing. How this uh, is developed, you know, to mm-hmm. create a safe helmet. Well, do you think if they construct a safer helmet over time, then they'll they'll still they'll be more like helmet to helmet hits? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the catch 22. Yeah, I don't that, know. that's that's the thing. Although maybe they would come down. See, it's it's a whole thing now because then maybe they'd come down on those more. You know, the refs have to it's, say these are there's, it's going to be a lot of issues. Yeah, you know, it's it's going to be a lot of trial and error. I feel like over over the next time. Well, I just think it's it's, it's you're always going to be evolving with the times. And now yeah. that mm-hmm. is recognized mm-hmm. as a problem. Yeah. It wasn't. Uh, well, it was denied to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that this will be something that is just constantly in, in discussion. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up, though. Like that, you know, the NFL is not. I mean, yeah, there was a different ratings this year, and it could be to like a lot of the factors we talked about. Yeah. And um, I mean, the big one could be the election. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, me personally, I know one of the debates I had on the I had on the game on one screen, mm-hmm. and I had the debate mm-hmm. on the other. Because uh, there was a Sunday night, yeah, there was a Sunday night it was Giants debate. game, and Giants right. game was on Sunday, and that was and that was very tough. I don't remember, yeah, I don't remember okay. who it was, but um, I think we lost. <laughs> but I had both, I had both on because yeah. you know for a while I was like I'm gonna watch my Giants, Giants and I'm Packers. not. I think no, it, was it was Packers. Packers. It was Packers. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Um, I was gonna say that. Like, yeah, so we lost that game, but I was watching it. And that's and that's then, a game that would normally be very highly rated. That's yeah, the well, do absolutely. Absolutely, but even then I was like, I, I want to catch some of this debate. So I had the debate well, on too. It was a debate to catch. Yeah, well, absolutely. Election stuff like aside, I don't know if it was just me. You're but, like, I don't I am tired of this election. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, 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 but um because <laughs> that could definitely obviously take some of the ratings away, but I don't know if it was just me, but I found that this season I I, I can't think of one like insanely amazing game i can think of like in other seasons where there there were just a bunch of games that everybody was talking about and there, this season i cannot i honestly can't think of there was a, there really were strange much. ones there were strange mm-hmm. games there was that arizona seattle game well, that was brutal <laughs> that that, was that, that ended in a time yes yeah, so i didn't i didn't enjoy that game that was it was just it weird was where no one, nines, it was six six yes no one could kick a field goal yeah. it was very strange but like i can't think of any like breakout games no, any I, like any real star player that like everybody's yelling about, I mean, like the only game would be the Cowboys, I would say, you know, well, the, that's the obsession true. over uh, Dak Prescott. That is, is well, I think there have been good storylines. If Mike's talking about games, it's interesting. I want to like refute the point, but I can't think of. I mean, you had great endings on Sunday. I was gonna say uh, Bears Packers was Bears was Packers Titans Chiefs. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, and and like I mean, the Bucks Cowboys game last night had me. Focus. Yes, I was at work, so I had to watch. But I was Very focused good. from start to finish. I mean, that was an entertaining game. Giants, uh, Cowboys, you know, entertaining game. Also, a lot of games gain attention via controversy. Mm-hmm. Um, and good for the league. I mean, but like there hasn't been some like you know like the Green Bay Seattle Monday Night game where a bowl went into you know uh, they got the call wrong with replacement officials. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would put Kansas City Denver and Denver up there is probably one of the best games of the season. Yes, that okay. was that, that was a game that was flexed in That's and it right. paid off big time. An overtime game it was incredible. That's Alex right. Smith and uh, uh, what's the kid's name? Uh, not Paxton, uh, but Simeon wasn't playing. I forgot, but no, it was no. some guy for Denver that uh, played really. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, but, but I mean, yeah, that is a good point that 
there haven't. I mean, there's still been some excitement this season. Yeah. But maybe it hasn't been as memorable as the other ones. I mean, the Cowboys. Yeah, kind of know that you don't, don't the Cowboys, uh, I will say, I mean, they're, they're the outliers. We're talking from a stat. Well, I, I don't know if I call it outliers. I mean, when you're the NFL and you're saying, are we having a good year and the Cowboys are competitive and you have two breakout rookie stars and mm-hmm. Zinc and uh, and Dak, I yeah. mean, this this is like, I mean, Except people when they play the Giants. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and both great games. Hey, both. Uh, I mean, the opening game of the year was, uh, was excellent. That was, so. that was yeah. It was close. One, it was one point game. Yep. You know, um, but I think you know, over, you know, in the future, like the game, like you said, is going to evolve. I'm very uh, curious to see what's going to go on with the. Uh, you said week sixteen with the commercials. Yes, you'll be you'll be our commercial expert. Uh, <laughs> no, that that could TV. be a change. But I I forgot what the details yeah. were, but because uh, I think pacing is just so job, important. Yeah. I really think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. Constant commercials can really take the excitement out. Yeah, I think the, exper- the game experience is dramatically changing. I know, because I've done it both ways. Mm-hmm. As a broadcaster myself, mm-hmm. I enjoy watching a game mm-hmm. from the beginning, You know, seeing even with the commercial breaks, seeing how the story develops. But the red zone is huge, and that is a totally different way of watching the game. And then, yeah. and it's really almost two different red zones. In the 1 o'clock, you're just going game to game, and people are using it for fantasy purposes. Or what they're doing is, you know, it's an easy way not to pay for the direct TV ticket. You mm-hmm. say, I don't need to see every game in its entirety. Yeah. But if Red Zone's going to take me to all of them at some point, I'm good with that. Now, the risk you take there is that Red Zone is focusing on Red Zone. And sometimes you'll get stuck on a bad game because they're in the Red Zone mm-hmm. <clears throat> or a game the game you're not interested in. But the 4 o'clock window, you have not as many games. So let's say... You know, it used to be, and it would drive me nuts, you know, let's say you had a Jets game, a home game at four. You can't, uh, Blackout rules say you can't put a game against that. Let's say that game's on CBS. Fox can't put a game against that. Well, if I go to Red Zone, I'm, get, I'm probably going to see some of the Fox game. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I mean, how many games are late? Even in, w- without buys, mm. with no buy teams, you're going to maybe four. So it's a lot more time. So that the game experience... Is changing and how we watch it too, um, and and I think the attention span is changing. And that we want you talk about dramatic endings. You know, uh, <laughs> we want the quick. Give me the great highlight. You know, yeah. give me the great. Uh, well, fine, it's not gonna be with us anymore. Yeah. But uh, yes. you know, ten second video. Um, it's true. It's we're we're in the age of instant gratification. Yeah. But um, Carson Wentz though also a breakout. Yeah. I mean, you do have bright yeah. young. Uh, QBs and QBs. I mean you do want not this year but eventually I think the league hopes that the Rams and this LA market will be a, a market to that's true too that could be interesting really, yeah. um, promote as they tried to do with hard knocks. so just curious when you said before are, do you think they're going to give up on the UK stuff or do you think they're just going to change the time oh they're not they giving get... up on it oh they're only expanding it there's more games next year I think it's six. I mean, you will you will never – that is not – that is only whether people like it or not. Mm-hmm. And there is a, a large group of people. I think the average fan doesn't care, doesn't need the game to be in London. No. But the league I certainly has expressed interest in having a team there. Uh, and you are – and the league feels it's important to grow the brand as a global game. And obviously the Super Bowl is in a lot of different countries. But whether it's in Mexico City mm-hmm. this year where the Raiders played – um, Canada, they don't do any more, but you, know, mm-hmm. you are gonna uh, only see more. The London thing is only expanding. I'm just, I can't. I that's that, can that, only, that's just fact. That's not right. Opinion. I can only see it hurting like a team though, because I mean, it, it's it's a it's rough for the U.S. teams to have to fly over there and then play. Imagine a, a London-based team having yeah. to fly constantly over into the U.S. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm I, not sure. I think, look, you have players complaining that they don't want the short week on Thursday night going from Sunday night. I mean, how are you going to have a London? Yeah, I, I, yeah exactly. I, I completely understand that because I was just thinking about that today. The Giants are on Thursday. It's like you have no time at all. You're right. Well, that and that's also. I mean, that's not a rating thing, but it's just something that has been a criticism oh, yeah. of right. the Thursday night from the player standpoint, and from. I mean, it's a business thing. It is, I should say, actually, in a business context. If you have players that are not ready or not rested, not just is it an injury risk for the players, but it has affected clearly the quality of game. Absolutely. Um, as I can tell you, besides an Oakland, Kansas City game, there haven't been many entertaining Thursday night games that I can yeah. think of. So, uh, but the the UK, yeah, you know, I mean, the, the, the it does benefit 
a team like the Jaguars, where they feel like, I mean, when you what you have is Shad Khan owns one of the soccer teams over there. So for him, it's cross promotion. Mm -hmm. He probably might get a larger gate over there than he would in Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, so that is that is not going anywhere. It's all for business. Yeah, that's what it is. It's all big business. But you know, we'll have to see. You know, I I don't think the NFL is going anywhere. That's for sure. <laughs> I think they're not. just going to expand. I think. In terms of making it a global market, I feel like it's going to take a long time if that ever does happen. If it really becomes well, I would say it's a global sport. I yeah, mean, I would say we're at that point. I mean, I don't. Think, I yeah. mean, the money is. I, you know, sport. I don't know because I don't. I'm, I I wouldn't know. You know, right. to go to other places and see, like, hey, no, I mean, the London man on the folks. Street interview. I mean, they do draw great crowds. The London yeah. people love it. Mm -hmm. uh, so that has not been, been an issue. Do you think it's ever going to be like reach a level that uh, European football uh, would ever be at? Philly in Europe? Up? Yeah, over overseas. I, it's hard to imagine that because European football is just so adamant about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and would a fan base really enjoy 12 games or 16 games? Mm. You know, if you get six weekends mm -hmm. in different parts of London or somewhere in Europe, that's a little bit different than uh, taking on a team 16 weeks. Let's say that team's not doing great. Mm -hmm. You know, the same thing that fans in Houston feel if their team's not doing <laughs> well. So, for, I think it's almost still a little bit of a novelty. But, I mean, and, and NFL Europe did exist, by the way. Mm -hmm. It was a league. Uh, I mean, Fox had it and it eventually folded. But, um, yeah, I think the way it's being done, I mean, I think the NFL will see how much they'll keep on increasing the dose, yeah. so to say. Now, do you think they'll ever bring back the XFL? Well, <laughs> there was a 30 for 30 on the XFL. Uh, we'll bring back Jesse Ventura and, and get this thing started again. I remember that first game in Las Vegas. It was exciting. Oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> what about the USFL with Trump now as president? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I think... Uh, <coughs> that's, a, that's a sour note to end yeah, the podcast on. I think we have, um, you know... The evolving NFL to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's more than enough. I think that's more that's than more enough. enough I don't think I don't, to go back to our initial. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think we need any other. Well, that's been pretty successful. The arena football. League. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, but I, I can't watch that. I just, no, uh, no, I think it's for a casual. Yeah, uh, most hardcore fans uh, don't. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's programming that networks pay for. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> broadcast selfishly, it's like broadcast opportunities, you know. So. Yeah. It'll show on ESPN the Ocho. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you know we covered pretty much everything. You guys have anything else to add? Jacob, you want to plug Did anything? You no, yeah. good. <laughs> you got any plugs? Uh, I, I, I think I used up my. I literally did use uh, for the viewers here Ethan's plug last night when I plugged my phone into his charger after I left my key at work. That's and right. Came crashing here, so. Um, I, <laughs> it's, uh, it's really, I feel, a special connection to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks right, for having me, guys. Well, it's been yeah. great having you on. Appreciate I'm it. glad we got to talk about this. We're, We're going to have you on again soon. Please, please definitely. Do. Always. Um, I'm happy to do it. And, uh, Mike, you got anything to add? I'm, I'm good. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.